Sam Walton, Made in America. What an inspiring story. He is the founder of Walmart and one of the greatest entrepreneurs. Again, one of the largest companies in the world. And let's just, let's just talk about his life, his, his, the timeline of his life. At the age of 27, he bought a Ben Franklin discount store and uh, within a few years, he had really grown that store a lot with his entrepreneurial skills to the point where the owner of that uh, uh, shop, in the sense, he had taken a lease out in the store and the owner of that land, of the real estate, decided that he was not going to renew the lease. So he was ousted of his own uh, store because he couldn't renew the lease. And at the age of 33, he had to start over again and which he did by starting Fife and Dime stores in um, in Arkansas. Now, he he made those a relative success and then moved on at the age of 44 to start Walmart. At the age of 44, he started Walmart. A lot of people think Walmart was an overnight success, but he Walmart became a billion-dollar company when he was... 61 and he became the richest man in America uh, he was a billionaire uh, richest man in America in 1982 when he was 64 years old so there's a lot to learn about this guy how he did it how he created one of the greatest one of the largest entrepreneurial empire one of the largest stories of entrepreneurial success in this world the biggest company at one point um, and the largest retailer in the world bar none um, so what was it about what was it about Sam Walton that made him so successful? Now, he himself he said that this is the first thing to learn about him. He had a passion to compete. He had a passion to compete, and that is what in your startup you might have a passion for something else. But whatever this passion is, in his case, it was the passion to compete. And he says money has never meant much to him. It was all about competing and being the best. He wanted to be the very best at the top of the heap. He didn't want to be the biggest. He just wanted to figure out how to make Walmart the best in the world. And there is a funny story about him. In 1980s, when he was touring Brazil or when he was on vacation or something, he found himself being arrested by the police and taken to jail. And when his friends came to bail him out, now th at this point, this guy is almost a billionaire. He is running a billion dollar empire and one of the richest men in America and the com and the Brazilian police have arrested him and his friends are confounded. What happened? How did you do it? How did you get arrested? And the, the reason why he got arrested was that he was out in the store. He was out in a Brazilian store and he had a measuring tape and stuff and he was bending, he was like crawling under the shelves and taking measurements and trying to figure out what, how these guys had put their merchandise up, what they had done, what was the edge, how did they figure it out, and all that stuff. So he was taking measurements, crawling, getting himself dirty. He didn't care. He just, he always carried with himself a pen and a yellow note sheet, like a paper pa pad, where he would take notes as to constantly keep on improving because he had this passion to compete, to improve, to become the best. The funny thing in Brazil, what happened was when, he, when the store employees saw him crawling around in the store, they call in the police and the police came and arrested him. So that just goes to show, even as a billionaire, he did not stop. He, he wasn't going to give up because that was his passion, that was his life. He wanted to figure it out. So whatever it is that you are doing, that you are trying to figure out, hopefully it is just as exciting to you that you're going to keep on doing it and keep on digging on it and keep on figuring it out. And David Glass, one of the former CEO of Walmart, he said that Sam Walton was willing to take, take risks. He was less afraid of failure than anyone else David Glass ever knew. And the key idea here is that he, for Sam Walton, it wasn't about failure. It was about trying. It was trying to figure it out, doing all these experiments to figure it out, and then just going after it to compete, to become the very best. He knew he had to try. He had to possibly fail in the process so and what is the other idea what what, what is the next key uh, important idea in this book that, or in his in his own personal story he worked really 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 hard 
16 hours a day, seven days a week from the first time he started uh, uh, the Ben Franklin store at the age of 27. He's been doing that retail. He's been doing retail 16 hours a day, seven days a week for all his life. Very few vacations, very few long vacations where he was just removed uh, from the store. And on Saturdays, he would go to the store at two or three in the morning just so he could go over the numbers before he met with his executive team. That is how dedicated he was. And on most days, he was in office at 4.30 a.m. 4.30 a.m., here's this guy who was at some point a billionaire, super successful, going to office at 4.30 a.m., going uh, to the office on, at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. on Saturdays to go over the numbers. It's dedication. It's hard work. Extreme hard work. Um, the next idea, and one of the other important, kind of paradoxical idea, he says is that in order for Walmart to grow big, he had to think small. And what he meant was that um, if they started thinking like a big company, if they started becoming complacent, if they started thinking we're a $50 billion empire and this small thing doesn't matter and that small thing doesn't matter, that would be the end of Walmart. So they treated every store like it was just one store and it had to be successful and they had to figure it out. So what, what Sam, say, Sam Walton says is that the reason they became successful and the reason they got big was by never acting like they were big, by never acting like they were uh, too big to do something or too big to fail or never acting like a really big corporation. And he has a few key ideas uh, on what it means to think small, what it means to um, incorporate being small in your business. In his business, it was think one store at a time. Don't think about the hundred or thousand stores that are out there and try to create success for all of them all the time. But think one store at a time. In your case, maybe it is think one customer at a time. Think as small as one customer at a time, one request at a time. You're a startup. You're trying to figure it out. You're an entrepreneur. You're hustling. One thing at a time, one startup at a time, one, one, one customer at a time. And the other idea was that you have to keep your ear to the ground in the sense you have to understand what are the ongoing challenges, what are the issues, what, are, what is happening in and around the business, in and around the whole empire. So you have to keep the ear to the ground and push responsibility and authority down as much as possible because that allows you to grow the people and also to allow you to think small. The other, other, another way to think small or to, to really make sure that you're always on the small end of the spectrum, he's like, stay lean, cut out the bureaucracy. And of course, things have changed a lot since Sam Walton has left the company, but still, Walmart is one of the greatest retailers, one of the greatest, uh, the most successful retailers in the world. And this book, definitely a, a great, great, great read about his story, about Sam Walton's personal story into the great success he had. Uh, highly recommend you learn more from Sam Walton. See ya.